Welcome to a new English Plus episode. This episode is all about vocabulary building and as we usually do, we will learn 10 new words every time in context. And our context or story for today is lightning. You can practice what you will learn in this episode on my website. There's a link in the description that will take you to the custom post I created for this episode. You will find a lot to learn on my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. And better yet, if you are a patron, you will get exclusive episodes, series, and resources to take your English and learning to the next level. You can find all the links you need in the description of the episode. But first, let me tell you about the words we're going to learn in today's episode. These words are depict, surpass, exhibition, atmosphere, collide, Induce, inherent, impressive, prevalent, and ingredient. And now, without further ado, let's talk about lightning. Spectacular, searing, explosive, and fiery are words used in attempts to depict the image of a bolt of lightning. Even fireworks, with their color and noise, cannot surpass the drama of lightning in the summer sky. The cause of these mysterious exhibitions of light patterns has always fascinated the curious who seek to explain such things. The Earth, like an enormous battery, leaks electricity. Electrons bleed from negatively charged areas of the Earth to the atmosphere. In time, Clouds may build up an electrical charge 100 million times more powerful than the charge contained on the Earth below. When this charge becomes stronger than the insulating air, it returns to Earth in the form of lightning. Another source of lightning is thunderheads. These clouds are filled with moisture in the form of ice crystals. As some of the ice crystals grow larger, becoming hail, they start to fall. With the billowing thunderhead, the falling hail collides with rising ice crystals and strips electrons off the crystals. The result is that the upper section of the cloud becomes positively charged, while the bottom is negatively charged. This induces an area of positive charge on the Earth below. Eventually, it forces the electrons from the sky to the Earth. Just as a spark leaps between the points of a spark plug, electrons jump the gap. The result is lightning. Lightning strikes the Earth as many as 100 times every second. A single bolt of lightning may develop 3,750 million kilowatts of power, but its energy lasts only a fraction of a second. Much of the inherent energy in a lightning bolt is lost as heat. The peak temperature in a channel, which is the path a bolt of lightning travels, may be as high as 55,000 degrees Fahrenheit. However, it lasts for only a few millionth of a second. Even more impressive is the speed at which lightning bolts can travel, as fast as 100,000 miles per second. One of the hot spots for lightning in the United States is Central Florida. Why is lightning so prevalent in this area? Central Florida has two of the main ingredients for electrical storms, moist air and heat. By contrast, the state of Washington, which also has plenty of moisture, has almost no lightning storms. The reason is simply that temperatures are much lower than the tropical heat of the Sunshine State. As fascinating as such storms are to watch, one should always seek shelter in an electrical storm. Standing out in the open or under a tree can be very dangerous. Lightning is attracted to both tall trees and open areas. Golf courses, parks, and beaches are excellent targets for bolts from the blue. As many as 100 Americans are killed by lightning every year. So, no matter how much one enjoys watching nature's fireworks, Electrical storms should always be treated with respect. So, that was what I wanted to tell you about lightning. And now, it is time to start talking about these 10 words, 10 keywords that I want to share the meaning of with you in context. Let me remind you again before we start talking about the words that these words are. Depict, surpass, 
exhibition atmosphere collide induce inherent impressive prevalent and ingredient and now we'll take a short break and we'll come right after to talk about these words don't go away are you serious about your vocabulary building if you really want to take your vocabulary to the next level and make 2022 the year when you build a huge active vocabulary bank i have just the thing you need I have created two vocabulary building book series. The first book series is crossword puzzle vocabulary building and the second is word search games and activities. And when we say crossword puzzle and word search, I am not only talking about these two activities. There are a lot of activities inside these books and with carefully designed activities that will make sure you remember the new words you learn in context with 10 books in each series and with more than 1000 new words in each book. Your active English vocabulary will get much better this year. The books are available on Amazon. You can find the links in the description. But if you want to see a sample of the books first, there is another link where you can see for yourself and know for sure that these books are the ones you really need to improve your vocabulary before you buy them on Amazon. Build your English vocabulary in 2022 and never be lost for words anymore with English Plus Vocabulary Building book series. Now let's start talking about the words we want to focus on from today's story about lightning. Let's start with the very first word, depict. D-E-P-I-C-T, depict. Let's see how we use that in context. We said spectacular, searing, explosive, and fiery are words used in attempts to depict the image of a bolt of lightning. Well, what does that mean to depict? It simply means to describe. To depict someone or something means to describe them or give an impression of them in writing. Now, of course, it could be in different forms. It could be in drawing as well. But here, since we talked about spectacular, searing, explosive, these are words. So we are talking about this aspect of the meaning, which is in writing. So if you want to describe something in writing, you can use this word, depict. You depict something. And in our example here, you depict the image of a bolt of lightning. So that was our first word. What about our second word? Surpass. S-U-R-P-A-S-S. -S. Surpass. Let's see how we use that in context. We said even fireworks with their color and noise cannot surpass the drama of lightning in the summer sky. So what does that mean? If one person or thing surpasses another, the first is better than or has more of a particular quality than the second. So here, nothing, we said, nothing can surpass the drama of lightning in the summer sky. Not fireworks, not even with all their color and noise. They cannot surpass the drama of lightning in the summer sky. This natural phenomenon that surpasses any other man-made fireworks. So that's the meaning of surpass. What about our next word? Exhibition. E-X-H-I-B-I-T-I-O-N, exhibition. Let's see how we use that in context. We said, the cause for these mysterious exhibitions of light patterns has always fascinated the curious who seek to explain such things. So what do we mean by exhibitions here? An exhibition of a particular skillful activity or something like here. It's a natural thing, of course, but it is still a kind of a display or example of this marvelous phenomenon that people notice and admire. That's the meaning of exhibition. When I say an exhibition of light patterns, we're not talking about something we don't like. We're talking about something we admire. So that was our word exhibition. We come to the next word, atmosphere. A-T-M-O-S-P-H-E-R-E, -E, atmosphere. Let's see how we use that in context. We said electrons bleed from negatively charged areas of the Earth to the atmosphere. So what is the atmosphere? Well, simply, a planet's atmosphere is the layer of air or other gases around it. And for us, we're lucky to have a healthy atmosphere, an atmosphere that has oxygen in it so that we can breathe and live, and so we can have life on our planet. For other planets, they have atmosphere, but their atmosphere is not as good as ours. That's why we have life on Earth. But this is the atmosphere. It's the layer of air or other gases around it. So 
That was our word. What is the next word? Collide. C-O-L-L-I-D-E. Collide. How did we use this word in context? We said, within the billowing thunderhead, the falling hail collides with rising ice crystals and strips electrons off the crystals. So what does that mean? What is the meaning of collide? If two or more moving people or objects, obviously, collide, they crash into one another. If a moving person or object collides with a person or object that is not moving, they crash into them. So it can be two moving objects or one moving and one stationary, doesn't matter. But when they collide, they crash into each other. Okay, so crash, clash, meet head on. That's the meaning of collide. That was our word, collide. Now let's move on to the next word, induce. I-N-D-U-C-E, induce. Let's see how we use this word in context. We said, the result is that the upper section of the cloud becomes positively charged, while the bottom is negatively charged. This induces an area of positive charge on the earth below. This induces. What does that mean? Well, to induce a state or condition means to cause it to produce it, to create it. Well, here, of course, it is natural phenomenon, but still there are reasons behind it. There are things that create it, that produce it. It's not just happening out of thin air or with no reason. There are reasons and these reasons, these ingredients, we'll talk about ingredients later, these ingredients in these conditions, when they happen, they induce an area of positive charge on the earth below. So simply means to cause something, to induce it. All right, that was our word. Now the next word, inherent. I-N-H-E-R-E-N-T. What did we say about that when we talked about lightning? We said much of the inherent energy in a lightning bolt is lost as heat. So when we talk about inherent energy, are we talking about something that comes from the outside or that comes from the inside? Well, obviously it's inherent, all right? So the inherent qualities of something are the necessary and natural parts of it. They come from the inside, the intrinsic, the basic, the natural. That can also be used for people to talk about inherent qualities, not those that you can acquire, things that you already have, inherent. We can use that for situations, for people, or for things, of course. And here, we used it to talk about the lightning bolt, the inherent energy, the intrinsic energy, the energy within. So that was our word, inherent. That is impressive, isn't it, right? And impressive is exactly the next word we're going to talk about. I-M-P-R-E-S-S-I-V-E, impressive. How did we use that in context? We said even more impressive is the speed at which lightning bolts can travel as fast as 100,000 miles per second. Imagine that, very fast. Well, of course, we can say lightning fast, right? It works here. So we use the word impressive, right? Because we're talking about even more impressive is the speed. So what is the meaning of impressive? Something that is impressive impresses you. It strikes you something great, splendid. And you are impressed because it is great in size or degree, or it is done with a great deal of skill. Now, obviously, we're talking about a natural phenomenon here, but that can also impress you. Because it is beautiful, like rainbows or aurora or other things like that. They're just great. If we're not scientists, we may not understand how they happen, but we are always impressed by them because they are impressive. That is the word. Don't forget, we're talking about impressive here, right? Now we are left with two more words. Two more words, and we will have covered 10 key words from this context. The next word is prevalent. P-R-E-V-A-L-E-N-T. Prevalent. Let's see how we use that in context. We said one of the hot spots for lightning in the United States is Central Florida. Why is lightning so prevalent in this area? Why is it so prevalent? We said it's one of the hot spots. Central Florida is one of the hot spots for lightning in the United States. It happens there a lot. So why is it so prevalent? The word prevalent, what does it mean? Now, when we talk about a condition, practice, or belief, or something that is prevalent, we simply mean that it is common. It is popular. Now, here, of course, we're not talking about popular. Lightning is not popular in Central Florida or not. But It is common. It happens a lot. When we say prevalent, we may mean, of course, popular, accepted, or common. But in our case here, we're talking about that it happens commonly there. 
It is a regular phenomenon in central Florida. It happens a lot. One of the hot spots for lightning. All right? That's the word prevalent. Our last word for today's episode is ingredient. I-N-G-R-E-D-I-E-N-T. Ingredient. How did we use that in context? Now, we just asked the question, why is lightning so prevalent in central Florida? And the answer is this. Central Florida has two of the main ingredients for electrical storms, moist air and heat. So what is the meaning of ingredients? When we talk about ingredients, we're talking about the things that are used to make something. Now, of course, we use that especially to talk about food. You might have heard this word before when you read a recipe somewhere or you wanted to make some kind of a dish or whatever, and you always have the ingredients, the things you need to make this dish. But of course, it is not exclusively used to talk about food. We can also use that to talk about lightning, like we just did in our story about lightning, obviously. So that was ingredient. Let me remind you again, we talked about 10 good words that you can add to your active vocabulary bank. The first word was depict. Then we talked about surpass, exhibition, atmosphere, collide, induce, inherent, impressive, prevalent, and ingredient. I hope you like the words. I hope you like the story that I shared with you today. It is a little bit scientific. I'm not going to say it is scientific. I shared just a couple of scientific details in it, but it is important to know, right? And the words are very important, and they are some of the most common words that you can use in your everyday language, both in writing and speaking. And so that was everything I wanted to share with you in this English Plus episode. Don't forget to visit my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com, first of all, to practice what you have learned in this episode. That's the first thing. And then you can check on the great learning opportunities you can find there. There is the activity center with daily fun activities, quizzes, and logic and math puzzles. And if you decide to become a patron on Patreon, there's a lot more available only to patrons like the exclusive audio series and my newest addition to patrons' benefits, the weekly assignment based on all our episodes from the week. There's also English Plus Magazine and many other benefits you get when you become a patron. All the links you need are in the description of the episode. What are you waiting for? Take your English and learning to the next level and never stop learning with EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. This is your host, Danny. I will see you next time.